Okay. All right. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the TSJG Neighborhood News. Today is July 30th, 2020, and I will be your host, Jessica Lopez, your Executive Director. We'll get started with a COVID update. So uh, the current situation in Fresno County, we are at 11% positive rate. That's that key metric that we're watching. So uh, once we are at 8% or below, uh, for a, a duration, the state will allow us to open schools and, and restaurants and other things of that nature. Uh, total cases in Fresno County, 13,933, up by 597 from the previous day. Currently hospitalized, 284, down by 13, and that's really important, that uh, hospitalized metric, and I'll share more about that in a moment. Looking at Fresno County uh, COVID data overall, uh, this is a report that came to us this week from the uh, Fresno County Department of Public Health and shows our uh, total positive cases. So you can see from March 1st um, through July, that trajectory continues to climb. So we have not yet peaked. Uh, we are, are continuing to, to climb there and uh, that hasn't changed. And then the metric to the left of your screen kind of shows um, the source of exposure, uh, which the blue portion or 42.3% are under investigation. 27.5, uh, the red portion are close contact, which usually means familial relationships or close working relationships. And then community spread unknown, 28.3%. The largest demographic of individuals testing positive for COVID are age 18 to 49. And again, that's, that's not surprising given that a lot of organ companies are testing their team member populations like San Joaquin Gardens, which a lot of those folks fall into that, that uh, group. Um, so wanted to share that data with everyone. I don't think there's anything else on this slide I would highlight um, for you. Um, so July, uh, the bend becomes a surge, uh, you know, we were bending that curve and then we reopened and then now it's kind of reached that we're still peaking, which they use the term disaster. This is the just slide from Fresno County Department of Public Health. This is not my slide. Um, and so when they look at all the cities and zip codes in Fresno County, all have been affected by COVID-19 at this point. Um, They're finding COVID positive patients in many areas of retail, food service, clinics, uh, you know, the packing houses and stuff, and jails were already being spoken to, but now they're seeing it in other areas. Uh, and the biggest news, as you've heard me mention before, is as we're tracking the hospitalization rates, that Fresno County Hospital, um, uh, all of the hospitals locally are, are severely impacted by COVID. And when they say severely impacted, that's not just looking at the number of individuals hospitalized, but the impact that that's had on their team. So their nurses, their, their physicians, the, the folks that, that are there to care for us, they've also you know, been testing their folks and, and when they're positive or symptomatic, they can't go into work and they have to quarantine at home. So it's having an impact on their um, ability to provide employees to provide service in the hospitals. Uh, fatality rate is approximately 1%. Uh, only folks 45 and older have passed away in Fresno County. And um, the big thing is for 50% of cases, the source is still unknown, which does indicate community spread of some sort. So again, why it's so important to stick close to home. Uh, this is a picture of uh, local hospitals. Uh, I have already mentioned this to you before because uh, my husband working for a community hospital um, had to set up all the, the networks and the computers and printers for the makeshift tent hospitals they're creating in their parking lot so that they can triage patients um, uh, for emergency services. So hospital capacity are being maxed out. And again, as I mentioned earlier, staffing is the biggest challenge for them right now uh, because they uh, have a lot of staff that are out due to COVID as well as just normal everyday, you know, run of the mill reasons that people call in or take time off. Um, so they have, uh, most hospitals locally have set up tents that are being used utilized for emergency care services. 
Um, this is a new chart that our Fresno County Department of Public Health puts out that um, determines our COVID-19 risk levels. So um, right now for Fresno County, they show us as a, we are a, a severe or level one, which means we should you know, just be going to work if we're an essential business and, and staying home for the most part. Um, so you see that on the barometer on the right hand side of your screen. On the left hand side of your screen, it goes through the cases. And so this may be of interest to you, but it, it um, determines uh, the, the COVID-19 positive activity rate um, based on ethnicity, gender, gender and source of exposure. So um, ethnicity predominantly Hispanic, um, you know, again, Fresno County is predominantly Hispanic, um, pretty much split in the middle by gender and then going through uh, that source of exposure. The real thing to highlight uh, on the graph is actually to the very left hand side of your screen when it looks at all the counties in our area, you can see again, but we also are the biggest county in Fresno County, but you can see the graph in our um, numbers of positivity compared to the uh, Clovis Reedley Parlier. Again, to me, that's not surprising because our county uh, compared to Reedley, you know, it's apples and oranges in comparison due to size. So again, uh, information coming from Fresno County Department of Public Health, you know, their prescription to slow the spread, um, really encouraging folks to stay home whenever possible. Um, use social distancing outside of your households, wearing your mask to prevent viral spread to others, cleaning surfaces and your hands, um, doing as much social activity outdoors as possible, and then promoting prevention and safety education for all. So I know a lot of what I share with you is repetitive, um, but it is ongoing education is the most important thing that the Fresno County Department of Public Health says we can do, because it really comes down to modifying uh, human beings' behavior. And that is not an easy thing to do. So I think it takes 21 days to form a habit, which is why so many people fall off diets and everything else. So we're gonna continue to talk about, you know, the way to slow the spread is to change your normal behavior, which means staying home, wearing masks, physically distancing, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, what is our, our local healthcare uh, system doing to coordinate for COVID-19? Well, they have expanded the number of hospital beds and, and staffing, as I showed you earlier, creating those makeshift hospitals and, and several alternative location care sites. Um, they're really working hard to develop tests and distribute effective medications. They are testing people with symptoms and delivering faster results and getting those, uh, those test results back to folks so that people know if they're positive so they can quarantine accordingly. Um, they are doing a lot of training people to track. Um, uh, Fresno County Department of Public Health really is looking for volunteers to help do contact tracing. Um, so if there's a known positive, help make those phone calls and determine who that person's been in contact with so that they can get those people tested and have them uh, quarantine until they find the results of said test. Um, and then of course, ensuring that infected people stay away from others and then creating support services to help people quarantine effectively. What does this all mean for us? Well, at San Joaquin Gardens, um, we currently, as of July 30th, have only one positive case. So our uh, three other team members were able to return to work as of today. So we currently only have one team member that has tested positive and is still self-quarantining at home. We're not waiting on any uh, results from any testing. However, uh, testing will commence again tomorrow. So we will have some PUIs starting tomorrow as we continue to do our ongoing um, response testing to the positive COVID activity on our campus. So our cumulative data for COVID to date, uh, we have had seven positive cases to date. All seven of those team members and residents have since recovered. Uh, and we've had 751 individuals tested um, on our campus, either team members or residents. So uh, next steps, as you remember, uh, back in early Ju uh, July, we had a team member in our Antonella building test positive for COVID. Because of that, we had to conduct two rounds of testing um, uh, and both would include uh, residents and team members. 
and those rounds of testing were completed and all came back negative. So now we can say Antonella is just back to their normal surveillance testing of the team members that we do for all of our team members. So Antonella is considered cleared based on those two rounds of negative tests. Um, the positive maintenance and dining team members that we had recently have triggered additional testing and we will be testing uh, folks on the 7th and the 21st of um, August for the Department of Social Services required testing. The team member that tested uh, positive in our village has triggered mandatory testing for all of our residents and team members in our village. And that testing will be done on the 31st and the 7th. And that uh, there's different testing dates simply because uh, Department of Social Services requires testing to be done 14 days apart and, and the uh, Depart California Department of Public Health requires that their testing be done seven days apart. So that's why we have so many testing dates and a big thank you to all of our clinical team members who are working so hard to do um, all of this testing in addition to their normal duties. So, um, but this is such an important component of how we keep our campus safe is to do this response testing, contact tracing testing, and then the ongoing surveillance testing. Visitation, as you know, is open on our campus on a very limited basis. So, you know, based on the COVID activity, we would ask that you really only have your essential visitors coming, you know, folks that you really need to see. There's a lot of COVID activity out um, in the greater uh, community, but we are open for visitation. Right now, on average, we're having about 20 guests um, visitors come to our campus for all levels of living in a day, which really compared to what we were doing prior to COVID is, you know, very different um, patterns and behavior from what we would have normally had in terms of visitors. Um, if you'd like to have visitation, you would just call a 430-8201 number, make your reservation 24 hours in advance, you'll leave a message on uh, that system, and somebody will call you back only if we cannot accommodate that requested visitation time. Um, but we are asking folks to wear masks, stay apart, um, wash their hands, and of course they'll participate in screening as they enter our campus. Uh, so again, for residential living, you would call that dedicated phone number. Our visiting hours are from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. We are restricting the number of visits that can occur on any given day so that we um, do not open the floodgates of visitation and have way too many people on campus um, so that we can be cautious. For our assisted living and memory care, um, and including Antonella now, we are fully open for visitation. So um, it, as it says there on the left-hand side of your screen, visits to par apartments for visitations are uh, allowed if there has been no new transmissions for 14 days. Um, we are meeting the requirements for that in our, uh, all of our assisted living buildings, so we can have visitation occur as long as people are wearing the appropriate PP uh, personal protective equipment. Again, for our higher levels of living, this, uh, reservations are required. We will, um, uh, no communal visits are allowed and um, nobody that is under transmission precaution, meaning somebody that's been tested for COVID or symptomatic would be allowed to have visitation. So uh, one more time, that visitation number, because we still continue to get questions about this, you simply call 430-8201, which is our visitation reservation line, leave a message. Uh, the visitors can remain in your apartment when visiting. Masks must be worn at all times while on campus. Um, and if you want to visit another level of living, meaning you have a friend in assisted living and you want to go visit them, you should follow the exact same procedures. You will be screened. Uh, you make a reservation uh, and um, participate in all the same check-in procedures. So again, uh, folks have sent emails, um, some upset that we're allowing visitation on our campus because COVID rates are on the rise. And while I understand and, and share that concern with all of you, um, I also know that COVID is gonna be a very fluid environment um, until a vaccine is found. And they're predicting that, you know, anywhere from, you know, six months to a year. Um, and, and then how long will it be till it's ready in mass quantity? 
So it, it's going to be a long duration that we're going to be living with COVID. It's going to be very fluid. Um, and so that is why the state of California put parameters in place to allow for visitation in a safe manner. So visitation only occurs, you know, as uh, we are allowing it based on the surveillance testing happening for our team members. So we are, you know, ongoing testing our team members. If there's no positive activity within that building or area, visitation can continue. If there is positive COVID activity in that building or area, we would stop visitation there. Um, and just as a friendly reminder to those that are concerned about the fact that we're allowing visitation, there are many residents who cannot leave campus. Um, they no longer drive uh, and have effectively been cut off from their loved ones for this duration. And therefore we've seen an increase in signs of depression uh, and other physical ailments that have come from that. So it, it is a real need for people to see their loved ones in a safe, controlled fashion um, in their apartments, wearing masks, distance, et cetera. Uh, COVID-19 symptoms, as you know, uh, they we're seeing these on a very, uh, what would you say, different scale. I mean, we a lot of our team members have been completely asymptomatic. Some of the team members are presenting, you know, with very minor um, symptoms, um, you know, maybe just a little bit of fatigue, a little tiny cough. So, it just really reiterates the fact that we found this because of our ongoing surveillance testing, but how attuned we need to be to our bodies right now and sharing um, any symptoms that come up. So, so please don't ignore any symptom. Let us know if you have them. And if you uh, feel like you need to be tested for COVID, we can assist you with that process. Remember always when you leave your home, the three W's, wear a mask, wait six feet apart, wash your hands, I, I'm seeing this done tremendously well on our campus where we don't see it happening as readily as out in the greater public, but it's really great to see stores like Walmart and Target um, following in Costco's standing um, in terms of requiring masks. And I think the more we see that normalize in society, the more adherence we're gonna see to all three of these W's, um, you know, waiting six feet apart and washing our hands as well. And as a reminder, if you're invited to any sort of gathering, you want to think about the three C's. You know, what is the, is this space gonna be closed off um, or a smaller space? What's the volume of the space? Will it be crowded? And will you need to participate in close conversation? Those three C's are gonna put you at the most risk for uh, community spread of COVID-19. So just be aware of that as you're deciding whether or not you wanna participate in um, something uh, that you were invited to. Our occupancy here at the Terrace at San Joaquin Gardens and residential living, we have, um, this must be people, yes it is. So we have 283 residents uh, residing in residential living. So uh, some of our apartments obviously have couples in them. In assisted living, we have 54 and in um, memory support or our village we have 28 and in skilled nursing we have 41 so again those are people not apartments typically i report to you apartments um, and our budget is for apartments so those two don't coordinate we currently have one deposit that's moving into tuscany 294c that is jean tuck Uh, sales would like to continue to ask if you would like to share your personal testimony of how you have felt supported um, by TSJG during the past few months or how is living at TSJG during this time been better uh, for you than if you were still living in your prior home. Um, these personal testimonials mean so much to our potential residents. So you could shoot an email to Alexis in our sales office or, or send it to me and I'll be happy to send it to her. But it is so important for us to share our story right now. I was talking with the sales team after our really great event today that um, I co-hosted with Terry Painter. And it just, I, I've not been to an event where people were that engaged and every single person in attendance asked multiple questions. So there definitely is a need and desire 
for uh, folks to be a part of our community. And uh, one of our sales counselors, Ruthie, was giving a tour post this event and said it couldn't have gone better. There were so many residents that when she was touring this prospective resident, you know, recognized her and came up to her. And, you know, and that's really the magic of TSJG is we are, you know, one big family. So please, if you are interested and so inclined um, to share your testimony with us, we would greatly appreciate it. Um, and your words are so much more powerful than anything we could say about this community. In dining, uh, we want to remind you, actually, Michael uh, Kalori had asked if I could ask our residents to wear their name badges. So given that he is brand new and he's trying to meet and greet all of you as you come through Speranza to pick up your meals and he really wants to get to know you. And what a weird way to get to know folks when we're all wearing face masks and everything else. So it would be such a help to him if you could please wear your name badge so that he could start memorizing your names and, and get to know you in order to better serve you and develop that all important relationship with you. So um, I'm wearing mine today. Uh, which I uh, usually forget to do in honor of Michael. Watch for a street sweet treat on Friday, July 31st. So we will be picking up, um, you will get chocolate. So who doesn't love chocolate? So we will have carts uh, filled with bags of chocolate. So it's like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory here at TSJG. So and Milano will be under the North Pergola at 1 p.m. Um, and uh, Piazza will be in the Piazza Pool Courtyard at 2 p.m. Sequoia will be in the first courtyard at 2.30 p.m. And then the Tuscany Circle or the laundry room at 2 p.m. So come out to one of those locations and get some chocolate. If, you, if we have happened to see the same person, hit us up at, at multiple locations. Um, we're just gonna laugh about it with you. And by that person, I mean me. I'm probably gonna follow this cart along and eat chocolate all day. That sounds like a really happy Friday to me. So please join us for a sweet treat on Friday and come get some chocolate. Uh, again, friendly reminder, we're still trying to sell out of our, our ice cream flavor of the month, salted caramel. So if you are so inclined, please go to the bistro and pick some up. Uh, as you know, we are currently open for business in Speranza and the Bistro, and that's been going well. We will uh, meet with the dining committee and get their feedback on how all of that's been going and what we can do to better serve you. We also have lots of group activities starting, which I'll go over in a moment. And then, of course, we are open to visitation at this time. Uh, Spa Bella is back in business, so we are open for full service. So come get your hair uh, colored or cut or styled, whatever you'd like, um, with Pam and Joan, and Martha is available for, for all of your manicure and pedicure needs. So please call Spa Bella at 430-8219. Um, Pam and Martha are full time for us. Joan is only working uh, a little bit during the week. Um, so they're trying to give every, get to everyone in scheduling. There's a lot of people trying to get in to see them. So we just thank you for your patience as we work through um, our list of, of residents wanting service as quickly as possible. In lifestyle enrichment, we have a lot of fun things to, um, to let you know about. Fresno violinist Patrick Contreras will be bringing live music to all of the TSJG neighborhoods. So this talented violinist has honed his street performing skills by playing in local retirement communities, backyards, and more. Patrick will be playing short sets in all four residential neighborhoods on Wednesday, August 12th from 5 to 7 p.m. So make sure on Wednesday, August 12th to open your windows um, or come out and enjoy some music. Um, but our thought was everybody could listen to it from the comfort of their own home and we could have this roving, talented violinists come out um, and go through the whole campus spreading joy and music where he goes. So if you're interested in seeing him uh, in advance, uh, you can go on YouTube and look at uh, Patrick Con Contreras. I hope I'm saying that right. So again, you don't want to miss this. You can watch this from your balcony, from your doorway, or you know, 10 feet away from your the neighborhood courtyard. We don't want everybody gathering in that courtyard, as you know, because of, of large gatherings not being an appropriate thing during COVID times. 
Um, but he will be looking to play all of your favorites. So come out and listen to our violinist, uh, Patrick Contreras, this uh, upcoming Wednesday, August 12th from 5 to 7 p.m. So I think that'll be really fun. Grab a bottle of wine, listen to some violin music. It's going to be a good evening. Last chance to enjoy a refreshing Italian cream soda. So Elizabeth will be at the North Milano Pergola tomorrow, Friday, July 31st from 1 to 2.30 p.m. There's lots of flavors to choose from and sugar-free options as well. So come out and enjoy a cool treat tomorrow. In fitness update, due to low participation, Wake Up With AJ will be canceled starting next week. We encourage residents to sign up for the fitness center and fitness classes. AJ's schedule is Tuesday through Saturday. If he doesn't answer the phone, just leave him a message and he will get back to you. Again, his phone number is 430-8293. Um, what we have going on for fitness is we have our yoga classes, weights and balance, water aerobics, wee bowling, and then of course the gym fitness center is open for reservations. I do want to reiterate for to use the gym, you simply need to make a reservation. You no longer need a doctor's uh, note or anything like that. Just it, it gets open to anybody and everybody. You simply need to make a reservation because we are um, requiring physical distancing, masks must be worn, and we're really limiting the participants um, so, and so that we can have time to sanitize in between. On Friday, August 7th, our Current Issues group will be returning. So Current Issues is returning via Zoom. So Friday, August 7th at 9 a.m., uh, the topic will be Living with the Pandemic Roller Coaster at TSJG. If you've not attended a Current Issues group before, it's a lot of fun. A lot of people typically go to this. I think we used to get 30 to 40 people that would attend um, this Current Issues group. Uh, but if you would like to join the Zoom call, uh, if you've not attended before, if you have any questions, contact Elizabeth Mendez at 430-8221. Our Great Courses Americans, America's Founding Fathers is being uh, shown starting Monday, August 3rd from uh, 9 to 9.30 a.m. in the Tolliday Theater. The limit is 10. You must sign up with Elizabeth, Elizabeth prior to attending. So if you'd like to come out and enjoy the great courses, America's Founding Fathers, um, sign up with Elizabeth. Uh, and that will start Monday, August 3rd. Coming in August, we have a lot of new uh, opportunities for folks um, for, to meet their spiritual needs. So we will be doing worship service um, Sundays on the patio of Holiday Theater at 9.30 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. We will be doing a pre-setup of chairs to determine how many seats will be available while we maintain that um, uh, six-foot physical distance. Um, but you will uh, be, uh, have to sign up or make reservations in advance to attend. Um, and so that's why we're doing two sessions, both at 9.30 and 10.30, because it'll be limited in numbers. It'll be outside on the patio. Um, so we thank you uh, for signing up for that in advance. We'll also be offering a walk through Holy Communion and Holiday Theater starting August 2nd. And then Bible study will be Mondays at 1 p.m. in Holiday Theater with a maximum of nine people in attendance. If you'd like to join Nancy Jen for Bible study, um, you can sign up as well. So for any of these events, if you have any questions, you can contact Nancy Jen at 430-8223. Uh, if any resident would like to uh, recommence one of their committee meetings that they were doing prior to, the basic guidelines are as follows, that all participants must be at least six feet of distance between chairs, outdoor meetings are best, any um, indoor meeting rooms must be reserved through the concierge and must be 10 people or less. Uh, and we recommend a 30 minute duration. Masks should be worn at all times and we should be, be taking signups to attend. And then of course we will go in and sanitize the room before and after the meeting. So if you just wanna host a little group that meets all of these guidelines, you can do so. And you don't need to apply for formal edict approval. And building and grounds, 
Uh, weekly shopping trips have returned. So starting Monday, August 3rd um, at 9.30 a.m. in front of the bistro will meet. Six residents can attend at a time, um, RSVP with the concierge, and hand sanitizer will be available for loading and unloading of the bus. Of course, masks should be worn at all times. Um, you know, we will be sitting people distanced uh, and putting things in place for that um, on the bus. And uh, we still will have limited shopping available for those that are not comfortable going out to shop right now through the Connect line. So you can still call the 4308216 number if you would like our assistance with shopping. But if you would like to go yourself, we will have this uh, weekly shopping trip available to you. Um, please leave your trash area free of debris. We're getting complaints that folks are not properly bagging up their trash um, and not um, uh, using the recycling chute as, as appropriate. So please tie everything up, throw them away appropriately so that you can be a good neighbor. Um, you, uh, last call we had, folks had asked about sanitation. And, and how we're doing that. So um, some, you'll see housekeepers that are using the uh, wiping method, uh, but we also have about six of these, we call them our Ghostbuster guns, but these are our sanitizing guns and they actually just spray a mist. And so we um, uh, go throughout uh, campus and any high touch areas, we use the sanitation Ghostbuster guns. We also use that in um, following up on activities in the fitness center, et cetera, because it allows a team member to quickly go through and sanitize um, in a, just a very quick fashion. So you see, if you see team members walking around these guns, that's what they're for. Um, specifically, a resident had asked um, how often we're sanitizing stairwells and Milano and Piazza stairwells are being sanitized three times a day uh, for your protection. Uh, mosquitoes are back and they are biting. So uh, the Consolidated Mosquito Abatement District has trapped mosquitoes on our campus and are currently testing them for West Nile and Zika. If they uh, confirm that any of the trapped mosquitoes um, have a West Nile or Zika, they will then come out and fog our campus. Um, but if they are just the annoying mosquitoes who bite, and um, don't have any disease associated, they will not come out and fog our campus. So um, thank you to Joe and the facilities team for reaching out to the Mosquito Abatement District so that we can get them to follow up on this now that we're getting reports of mosquitoes back on our campus. Um, hopefully we can get rid of them soon. So again, uh, tips that you can do to help all of us in keeping mosquitoes out is being aware of your surroundings. Mosquitoes develop, um, development will occur in and outside of your home. So in any sort of standing water, it takes five days. So, um, so every five days, they recommend you dump water or remove the saucers. Um, if you have uh, flowers that you're keeping you know, um, on, in your apartments, same thing, they recommend switching out that water or, or discarding uh, recutting them or discarding them. And then just look for um, any sort of standing water and dump that every five days. So if you have water bottles out for, or water bowls out for your uh, dogs or cats, you wanna dump those and replace that um, every five days. Uh, make sure that you remove any unnecessary items from your entryway where they can live and hide and then follow you in the household. And then of course, keeping your doors and your screens closed. Just a friendly reminder, thank you all for calling in uh, your transportation request in advance, but please have your information ready when you call. And, and that information is the date and time of your appointment, your doctor's name, the phone number, and the address. So when you call the concierge to make that appointment, please make sure you have all of that information ready to go. Um, you can let your friends and family members know that the screening tent is no longer accepting drop off items. So items can now be delivered directly to you. Um, again, you can call the reservation line to, uh, to schedule the delivery so that you can say, hey, uh, my friend Joe Smith is gonna be dropping something off tomorrow um, it, around three o'clock and you would put that on the reservation line so our screening um, tent knows to allow them entry to the campus. 
Happy birthday, July 31st to Marilyn Larson. So if you see Marilyn, please wish her the happiest of birthdays as we wrap up our July birthday babies. And some 10 ways to lift your spirits. Number one, you can count your blessings. I tell my husband that every day and make sure I'm at the top of his list as I should be. You can think positively, relax and breathe, appreciate someone or something. Always look at the bigger picture. You can create something, take one step towards a goal, no matter how small. Stop and have some fun and smell the roses and just love and cherish this very moment because you won't get it back. And as always, you feel better when you smile. So smile more, even if you're wearing a mask, smile and the world will smile with you. I define joy as a sustained sense of well-being and inter internal peace, a, a connection to what matters from Oprah Winfrey. And finally, just do what you can do today. So just do what you can do today. Um, and then we had uh, some interesting visitors on our campus recently. This didn't come up in the security report, but one of our roving resident reporters sent me an email with the attached picture that there was a standoff on the wall next to Hope Lutheran Church between um, uh, two uh, feisty creatures, we're gonna say. So a uh, possum and I don't know if that's a feral cat or one of our residents cat, but there was quite the standoff and we will have to wait till I open it up for comments and unmute everyone for anybody to share what the outcome of that picture was. So finally, some humor for you. What did the bald man explain when he received a comb for a present? Thanks, I'll never part with it. What's the best thing about Switzerland? I don't know, but the flag is a big plus. What do you get from a pampered cow? Spoiled milk. Why can't your nose be 12 inches long? Because then it would be a foot. <laughs> I poured root beer in a square glass. Now I just have beer. So these are, we need you to send us jokes is really what we're saying. We're, we're scraping the bottom of the barrel here. We need some jokes and some humor. So please, all of our roving report, resident reporters, send us some jokes our way. And then finally, the hunt for the gnome. Uh, the gnome is relocated every Friday morning. Call in your sightings of the gnome by 4.30 p.m. each Wednesday night. And the winner will be drawn live on the Thursday neighborhood Zoom call. So with that, my good friend, Mr. Dennis Painter, are you ready to pick our winner? I am ready. We had fewer entrants this week, probably because uh, AJ threw a curve and didn't move the gnome. <laughs> and apparently not everybody thought to look where it was last week. He was so, testing us. <laughs> That's uh, funny. A new winner this week in Armony Shishmanian. Yay! Armony, congratulations. You're the winner of the Hunt for the Gnome. Your gnome cookies are down at the concierge desk, and we will call you to let you know that you're the big winner. So congratulations, Armony. With that, I will go ahead and stop sharing my screen and unmute everyone so I can open it up for questions.